The following is a reflection on the readings for Tuesday of the second week of Ordinary Time. Our first reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. The responsorial is Psalm 111, and the Gospel is Mark chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. Having endured the past year of sorrow and struggle, and with the uncertainty of the future, today's first reading offers refreshing consolation and hope. The author first reminds us of God's justice, that he will not overlook our work and the love shown for the sake of those in need. There are many scriptural examples of this principle. In the book of Tobit, chapter 12, the angel Raphael informs Tobit that his prayers and charitable works rose up to the throne room of God and elicited a response, that is, Raphael was sent to heal Tobit and guide Tobiah to his future wife Sarah. As well, in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius is informed by an angel that, quote, Your prayers and alms have been remembered before God, end of quote. And so St. Peter informs Cornelius, a Gentile convert to Christianity, of the good news that God's grace and favor are available to all nations. Then the author of Hebrews encourages everyone to show the same diligence in good works to the very end, so that hope may be realized and the promises of God given to Abraham and his descendants fulfilled. The temptation to sluggishness must be fought and overcome says our author, by imitating those who, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. Chapter 11 of the Letter to the Hebrews will splendidly recount the many patriarchs and faithful ancestors who not only persevered, but conquered kingdoms, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, put foreign armies to flight, and endured to the end, although they themselves would not see the goal fully realized in the coming of the Messiah. To exhort his audience to persevere, the author then refers to the promise God made to Abraham of future blessings, which was subsequently elevated to a divinely irrevocable oath after the faithfulness of Abraham willing to sacrifice his only son Isaac on Mount Moriah. This latter event prefigured the ultimate sacrifice of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, which fulfilled the everlasting blessings promised to humanity and solidified our hope for a better future. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church states, quote, Hope finds its origin, motive, and object in God. Paragraph 1812 God is the one who proclaimed, quote, I know the plans I have in mind for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. End of quote. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. In today's gospel, the same point is made when Jesus encounters the Pharisees who accuse him of violating the law regarding work on the Sabbath. Jesus and his disciples were hungry, and as they went through the grain fields, plucked heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands to extract the nutritious kernels. This was allowed by the law of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 26, quote, When you go through your neighbor's grain field, you may pluck some of the ears with your hand, but do not put a sickle to your neighbor's grain, end of quote. But the Pharisees, always looking to trap Jesus, claim he is violating the Sabbath. Jesus, knowing the heart of his Father, uses this accusation to bring attention to what is most important, that is, meeting human need. He and the disciples were hungry, and the overly narrow interpretation of the Pharisees would not interfere with the higher law of compassion. Yes, the Sabbath was important. In the book of Genesis, when God created on the first six days, he called it good and very good, and rested on the seventh day. The Sabbath is therefore to be revered, but there is something even more important than obeying the Sabbath law. As Jesus says, quote, The Sabbath was made for people, and not people for the Sabbath. Jesus appeals to the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel chapter 21, when David, whom the Pharisees highly esteemed, was fleeing from Saul, and famished, 
entered the house of God on the Sabbath, when Abiathar was high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. The preservation of life took precedence over the prescriptions of the law. As Abiathar obeyed the spirit of the law by exercising compassion, and neither David nor Abiathar were criticized, so all the more Jesus the Messiah. Again, the lesson is related to the virtue of hope. Although there is suffering and want in this life, when we reach outside ourselves to help another in need, we can be assured that God will not forget our efforts and the love we show for His sake in serving others. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, To the extent that you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Aided by God's grace, let us persevere in serving Christ by serving one another in love. Finally, the author of Hebrews concludes today's first reading by this remarkable statement. Quote, we have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain, where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. End of quote. Earlier in Hebrews chapter 2, our author cautioned that we remain attentive and vigilant to our faith in Christ, lest we, quote, drift away. The image is of a ship that, not properly anchored in the harbor, silently slips away and is wrecked on the rocks. We can, day by day, through neglect, drift further and further from the Savior and find ourselves in peril. Therefore, let us persevere in our good works so that our hope may anchor us steadfastly in Christ our High Priest, who has entered the throne room of heaven and continuously intercedes for us before his Father. Let our response be that of today's psalmist, who states, quote, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. End of quote. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen.